In this video, I'm going to show how to get some data from the World Values Survey and match it with some data from the um, World Bank Data Bank to do a regression. So first, I'm just going to go to Google and type in World Values Survey. It comes up with the home page of the World Values Survey. I'm going to click it. It's taking a few seconds to refresh my page. And on the left, there is a link called Online Data Analysis. And I'm going to click Online Data Analysis. And at the bottom line of this gray area here, I have something which says click here to access the Online Data Analysis module. And thing that you're probably interested in is this one, the 2005 to 2008 fifth wave of the World Values Survey. Um, I'm going to click this, and I'm interested in all of the countries, so I'm going to click this checkbox, select all at the top, confirm the selection, Okay, here we are, and if I scroll down, I get the large number of question names all in one big list, and um, I think there's a quicker way of finding the variable that I'm interested in. I'm interested in seeing if attitudes towards bribery have a connection with per capita GDP. So to sh avoid reading the whole survey, I'm just going to type in the word bribe under word search and then click search and it will tell me if there is a variable that, it, that contains that word. So um, it's still processing my search, working comparatively slowly. Okay, and there I get the only question in the questionnaire, V201, which says, is it justifiable for somebody to accept a bribe, somebody accepting a bribe? So I click on that variable, and it starts by giving me the text of the variable, and I'm going to click on marginals, and this gives me the count of the number of people who answered each category across all the countries. So when I click marginals, it should give me um, a count of those people who said it's never justifiable to accept a bribe, um, all of the eight intermediate categories, and then um, uh, n so from never justifiable to always justifiable. I click cross tabs, now I'm going to get countries as the columns of the table. I have an indicator at the top that it, it is producing a table. Okay, so here is my table, and I would prefer for the countries to be the rows and the categories of the variable to be the columns. So I'm going to click here here where it says exchange rows and columns and again it's taking a little bit of time to refresh the screen okay there I have it I have the same data with the rows the row dimension showing the countries and so now I want to click the XL icon there so click the XL icon Taking some time to do this. Okay, and now it's trying to open with Excel, and that's okay. Yeah. And it's now finally opening my copy of Microsoft Excel. For this illustration, what I would like is I would like the country to be in column A. So I'm going to delete the existing column A, which is mainly blank. And I'll delete row two. And also, I, I don't want standard deviation to be there for this analysis. 
that's right. So let's left justify the country. Okay, so now I have this category never justifiable in column B. And I happen to notice that there's a very peculiar phenomenon with Slovenia, that Slovenians, apparently 71.3% of them um, consider taking a bribe is always justifiable, and the first four columns are, are missing. So I'm going to assume that that's not valid, or, or argue it's not valid in my text, but I'm going to put a, a note here. Note, data for Slovenia, Slovenia removed. And then I'll have to justify that in my, my text. Um, I want to create a blank column here, so I'm going to click on the column header for C and press insert. <clears throat> and this is where I would like to put GDP per capita. So now I'm going to the World Bank homepage, www.worldbank.org, and I'm going to click on data, indicators, GDP per capita, and I'm going to pick PPP for purchasing power parity, and I'll click go. And I have my data table, and I now want to click download data into Excel. And I prefer to have my data in the same, all in the same worksheet, workbook. So I'm going to create a new sheet in my world value survey data. So I'm going to click there and I'm going to rename it uh, GDP per capita. I'm going to go here, click the top left cell and copy. Click the top left cell and do paste special values and number formats. And I know that I want to count the column for the year 2006. I'm going to take 2006 data. So I'm going to fill in a column, uh, a row there with numbers in ascending order. So I'm going to do fill series up to 99. I'm going to scroll over and look at what year, the year 2006 equates to column number 51. I'm going to need that in a minute. So to fill in the data, I'm going to click equals, click the function symbol, VLOOKUP, I'm going to type VLOOKUP here, enter, and double click it to get the dialog box. So with my cursor flashing in lookup value, I'm going to click on the name of the country in column A. So it gets A4 as the lookup value. The table array is the array of per capita incomes on this worksheet. So to select all of the cells, I go to the bottom right cell and just select everything with my mouse, scrolling all the way to column 1. Release the mouse, and 51 was my value, and it has to be an exact match. So it comes up with 31,274,00, and it has a percentage sign because this column was previously formatted to show percents. So I want to change that just for tidiness. So I'm going to format the cells so that this is... Um, currency format with a dollar symbol and now that does look like an annual income and I'm going to check it's the correct one for 2006 actually let's add 2006 to my label 2006 let's check back there and scroll over to the right and for France let's highlight this with a yellow color just so that we um, we could do a split table but I Let's do it this way for now. Um, okay, France is 
there in that dimension. So let's look up what is the yellow column. 31,274, and it is 31,274. So I believe my formula is correct. I want to edit this cell formula by putting a dollar sign A so that I always look up the country in column A and the grid in the table area should always be A1. So that's dollar A, dollar one. And I edit BE254 in the same way. If I put my cursor before BE254, click function key four, it now reads dollar B E dollar two five four, and that means it's that's an absolute cell reference. And now if I copy this down the column, it's always giving me the correct data. Now, now we start to run into a few problems because the names of the countries are spelled differently in this case. In the case of Great Britain, um, I know that the World Bank uses the term United Kingdom and the United Kingdom and Great Britain are not absolutely synonymous. Um, so I'm going to put a note here, two asterisks, United Kingdom data from World Bank data bank. Um, Great Britain data from World Values Values Survey. Technically, Great Britain does not include Northern Ireland, so there could be a mismatch there. Um, yeah, it seems I accidentally put a space after the word kingdom, and that made it fail to look up the value. Uh, in the case of South Korea, I can't remember what the World Bank calls Korea, so I'm going to click on per capita GDP to look it up. And they call it Korea Republic, so I'm going to click the cell, click copy, and paste it in there. And it automatically updated the income. And let's see, the next country that's a problem is Taiwan, and I happen to know Taiwan does not exist at all as far as the World Bank data set is concerned, so I'm just going to delete this row. And I happen to know Vietnam is spelled all one word with a small n in the World Bank data set. Yep, that's brought the data back to life. The Egypt has a longer name in the World Bank data set, so let's copy it. Egypt Arab Republic. So copy, paste, Iran is similar, I think it's called the Iran Islamic Republic, let's see if we can copy that, yes, Islam is Ra Islamic Republic, paste, and another country dispute causing programming problems there. I think it's called Hong Kong SAR to make it clear that it's part of China. So let's copy the spelling over. Hong Kong SAR comma China. So let's copy that spelling there. And Andorra seems to have missing uh, income data. Let's just check. Is there a uh, space at the end, and let's just check that it really is missing the income data. So we're going to go to the top and scroll over to the yellow column, and yes, it does appear to be missing, missing data, so we're going to delete that row. And Slovenia, we decided to delete Okay, so we're now in good shape to, to do our regression. So I'm going to click data, data analysis, regression in the list of procedures, 
the y range, that's the thing we are predicting, is there. So I'm going to grab those cells. The x range is the thing that we're using to do the prediction. So this is going to be um, the proportion of people in the country who think taking a bribe is never acceptable. I'll put it in a worksheet called results and click OK. And now we look at the results. The R square is 0 0.04. But more seriously, the P value is uh, both of the P values are above 0.1. They're both above 10%, which is the highest P value I've ever seen anybody accept in an academic paper. So, really, this model is not publishable at all. Do not submit it as part of your essay. Please find something with a more significant relationship than this.